but I also want to show you guys uh, my culture right now and uh, how I feed these guys. So let's do that. Welcome back to the fish cave. We have a lot to talk about. New fish, new plants, new projects. We have to winterize the fish cave. Today we're launching a new series that's gonna cover an individual tank at a time, one by one. We're gonna take a deeper dive into that tank. We're gonna start with a 10 gallon planted pea puffer tank, AKA pea puffer paradise. I'm gonna walk you guys through kind of what the stocking is, what my inspiration was, the plan, what future plans are. And I also wanna bring you guys up to speed on the last month or so. If you're new here, welcome. If you end up enjoying today's video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Let's get to the tank. The plan is to do a deeper dive into each of the 16 tanks in the rack system eventually. But like I said, guys, we're going to start with a 10 gallon planted pea puffer paradise today. It's been a bit since the last video and I appreciate everyone who reached out to me both here on YouTube through email and on Instagram. I wasn't planning on taking a break this long, but I already have a few videos shot that just need to be edited and a few more in the hopper. So you're gonna have a bunch of videos coming out over the next few weeks. Like I said, we got a bunch of updates and stuff to be filmed and that's already been filmed. Uh, Instagram's the best way to get in touch with me as I've been posting there every day. So make sure you follow me there if you're not already. If you do already follow me on Instagram, then you may recognize this tank. I've shared a few pictures of it, but let's take a deeper look. So I've had this tank set up for oh, quite a while. It's one of the first ones I set up. And my goal from the beginning was always to make it a pea puffer tank. And as you can see, there's there they are right there swimming around. But there's a, a dirted substrate and I capped it off with some, some gravel and some sand here. Um, the hardscape is mostly some wood and I got some rocks here from a defunct railroad station. There is a little bit of chola wood right there and it's not a crazy aquascape, but I kind of just made like a path to the back left. The pea puffers are actually a recent addition, and for the longest time, the only thing in here was a bunch of these red ram's horn snails, which if you look at the bottom here, you can see that there's plenty alive, but there's also plenty of dead ones, because, well, let's be honest, the pea puffers are doing what they're supposed to do, and that's have a snack every once in a while. And the plants have also been in here for a while as well. Um, the first plant I put in here was this dwarf sag that's kind of, not fully carpeting, but kind of coming across the bottom. There are a few crypts, I believe this is a crypt parva, and there's also a crypt uh, pink flamingo. Big shout out to the guys over at Aquascape Supply here in Orlando. Brand new uh, aquascaping, kind of uh, like an ADA store almost here in Orlando. It's quickly becoming one of my uh, favorite stores, so if you're local, definitely check them out. Um, I've had this Anubius on this tree back here for a while. Another uh, plant, because I'm trying to get some growth in the background, so I want some stem plants at some height. So a big shout out to uh, one of the subscribers here, uh, Patrick up in North Carolina, for sending me some of this uh, Sunset Hygrophilia. There's a piece back there growing well. Sorry for the, the frog bit roots. And he also, he sent me a bunch of plants, as well as this Subwasser Tang we got in here. Another stem plant I recently added is um, this back here that's gonna get some red to it. I forget the name, but I'll, I'll put it down below. I got that from Aquascape Supply, as well as my first boost. Um, there's some boost there, and I put a few pieces of boost here on the, uh, the chola wood as well. To round out the plants, we got some of this Java Fern uh, Windelof, which is not looking so hot, but as you can see, there's some new, new green growth coming in here, and I may trim some of this brown growth. Patrick also sent me some Java Fern Windelof. It wasn't this one. I'll show the one that he sent me. It was actually much nicer looking. And uh, speaking of viewers and subscribers sending me plants, I actually got a bunch of plants from Stephanie out in California. So a huge shout out to Stephanie. I don't think any of them are in this tank, but as we show other tanks, I'll definitely mention them. And she also hooked my wife and I up with some succulents as well. So thank you to Stephanie out in California. We also have some hornwort here near the top and then floating on top here we have a few pieces of frog bit and a little bit of duckweed. We have some uh, dwarf water lettuce. I'm just kind of trying to see what works well in here. As you can see the moisture on top of the frog bit, that's not good for floating plants. So I may end up trying to remove this lid. As far as the light goes, big shout out to my local friend Chris. It's just a small Odyssey um, two bulb T5, like aqua flora bulbs that seem to be growing plants really well for me. Um, the plants in here seem to be growing decent, so I, I attribute that to the lighting. As far as those main stars of the show, it's these uh, two pea puffers. Now, I originally was planning on getting a few more. I started with two, and um, I still may get some more in the future, but 
I'm telling you guys, if you don't have peat buffers, you got to definitely uh, consider it. These guys are so active. Drop a comment down below if you think they're a male and a female. This one over here seems to get a little more color to him or her, maybe a little more bluish green, while the other one stays a little more, you know, uh, black spotted with the base color. So I made him a pair. I'm not sure. My biggest thing is I want to make sure they're healthy. And, um, you know, when you get these guys, you want to make sure you deworm them. For the most part, they're all wild caught. The reason why I didn't get a few more, a uh, big shout out to uh, Fishy Business. I was gonna buy a few more, but they refused to sell some to me because they weren't in the, you know, the best quality. So they didn't want to sell me potentially sick fish. So I appreciate that. And I may pick up a few more in the future. These guys are fairly easy to care for. You know, the biggest thing is species only. Um, I keep the temperature right about 80. You wanna make sure you have a five gallon tank for one or you know, a 10 gallon tank to keep a couple. And the biggest thing is they're, they're pretty aggressive, even with each other. So you gotta keep an eye on it. Like you said, these guys, or like I said, these guys are chasing each other quite a bit, but I'm pretty confident that just these two in a 10 gallon, I should be fine. The hardest part about keeping these guys so far has been the feeding. And it hasn't been that difficult because like I said, I planned ahead. And as you can see here, there's plenty of uh, ram's horn uh, snail graveyard here. But I also feed these guys black worms. And that's a video I'm gonna shoot in the future, show you guys how I culture the black worms. But I also wanna show you guys uh, my culture right now and uh, how I feed these guys. So let's do that. Live food isn't for everyone, but I promise you, you know, my fish love it and your fish will love it. And this culture is pretty easy to, to handle. Uh, that's a project for another day. But we got big things happening with that sump. Um, we got tanks everywhere, guys. These tanks aren't gonna be permanent, but we got tanks set up over here. The far one is where we have the, uh, the dwarf rainbow fish fry. I'll put an update on those soon. These tanks in this 55 gallon, you may have seen sneak peeks here and there of them, but these guys are gonna be going in some tanks over here eventually. And I'll be keeping the uh, black worm culture right here. So you guys can see, we got quite a few black worms. Shout out to um, Aquascape Supply. Like I said, local fish store here in Orlando. Got my starter culture there. And they gave me some pointers on how to set up this culture. Let's go harvest some. What I essentially use is like a turkey baster just to grab some out, and we're gonna feed the pea puffers. I will be doing a video, like I said, in the future on how to culture these guys, because I think they're awesome. I spent five bucks on one initial culture, and I've been able to get you know worms out of here for weeks and weeks so far. And like I said, all, all the fish love them. Fry, small fish, even big fish. Drop a comment down below with any feedback about future Tank by Tank series videos, what you guys want me to cover more or less of. In the next few weeks, we're gonna have plenty of videos coming out. I got a tour of my buddy Jose's fish room. I'm gonna do a collaboration video with my buddy Rob. I'm hoping to do a video with the new local fish store. And like I said, we got a bunch of projects going around here in the fish cave. I appreciate you guys watching, and as always, stay positive and stay passionate.